So this is pretty cool. Oh, look, snow. Got this. Et voilà. My name is Jess, I live in Northern California, and I'm cooking my way around the world 500 miles at a time. Well, technically, I'm cooking my way from Portugal to Japan 500 miles at a time, and we will see what happens after that. So we are in Goksun, Karaman Marash province, Turkey, and we have got a lot to do. We are here in the Taurus Mountains. We are in a really interesting place. We're kind of in a crossroads of people and cultures. To the south from here, we have the Levant, the Middle East, Aleppo, Syria is only like a four hour drive from Goksun, which seems weird because that's like the same amount of time it takes me to go to Lake Tahoe. But I guess if you live in this part of the world, that's not so weird. Behind us to the west is the Anatolian Peninsula, the Mediterranean Sea, Europe, everything that we have done before on this show. And then ahead of us to the east, is the Armenian highlands, the Caucasus, and like all of Asia stretches out before us. So just as a reminder, I'm not really in the Taurus Mountains, I'm just here in California. But if I were in the Taurus Mountains, there's a couple of things that I would do. First, I would definitely just spend some time chilling in a mountain cottage. Not far from Goksun, there's a national park called Baskanu Shielasi, and their Instagram is amazing. It just looks like a cozy little winter wonderland. There's forest cottages surrounded by trees. There are these adorable deer that just seem to constantly be like poking their heads out. It's not far from an alpine lake. It just looks amazing. Sign me up. And then the other place that I would definitely go to is Mount Nemrit or Nemrit Dagi. Mount Nemrit is an ancient tomb from the first century BC. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it has these giant heads on it. Some people call it the Easter Island of Turkey. So if you're new to the show, what we're doing here is we're checking out a couple sites that we wish we could go see and we're also cooking some of the food that we wish that we could eat if we were so lucky as to travel from Portugal to Japan by land. So we're gonna stay here in California, but we're gonna do our best to recreate the experience of visiting Goksun, Karaman Marash province, Turkey. So this week, mountain cottages, giant heads, and we're gonna do some cooking. We're gonna make lamajun, dondurma, and salad. We've got a lot to do. Let's get going. <laughs> Apologies as usual for the snoring dog. We really can't help it. Um, she snores a lot and this is her house too. So there will be a snoring dog in all of these videos. So if I really were in Goksun, I think my first stop would be here, Bulduk Donor, because according to Google reviews, this is the place to go to for Lama Jun in Goksun. Lama Jun is a word with Arabic roots in Arabic, lam means meat and ajin means dough. It's a flatbread. It's topped with a blend of meat and spices and then it's cooked in an oven, kind of like a pizza. In fact, I've seen a lot of recipes calling this Turkish pizza, but I think that that's kind of doing a, a disservice. It doesn't seem accurate to me. It seems kind of like calling lo mein Chinese spaghetti. It's just doesn't seem correct to me. We won't be calling it Turkish pizza. We will be calling it Lama Jun because that is what people in Goksun are probably going to call it. So tonight we are going to make Lama Jun. We're gonna do the quick and easy route. We're not gonna make our own dough. I don't have time for that. So we're gonna be using lavash is our crust for it. This is lavash from Trader Joe's. The fun new spice this week is sumac, which I have never used before. Sumac. That has such an interesting taste. It's sour, it's tart. It's like, it's good. <coughs> I inhaled it. It's good. It's salty and sour. We have some very thinly sliced onions in here and we're gonna start by adding some sumac to these and a little bit of uh, parsley and that's gonna kind of soak up while we're cooking our lama jun. A little salt. So in our bowl, we've got some beef. Now we're gonna grate an onion. Teaspoon of tomato paste. We're gonna grate a tomato. Chopped garlic, more parsley. 
about two teaspoons of yogurt, a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of Aleppo pepper, and a teaspoon of paprika. Now that we've got our nice little mixture here, we're just gonna stir it up. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to it to uh, make it a little bit soupier and softer. Taking our lavash. Meat. Okay, we're gonna slide it in the oven. All right, so our first one's out. It's good? It's good. Kind of tastes like a kebab. I want to try it. There's some mayonnaise on it. Mm -hmm. All right, so this time we're going to put a little bit of pecorino. We're going to do our onions. Fresh parsley. One like this and this one like that. Cut this like that. Et voilà. Delicious. I like the sour onion. We're having a llama gin party. I like it. It tastes like street food. I can picture like it's the afternoon. You're walking around the bazaar. Mm -hmm. You're just a little bit hungry. And you're like, oh, seeing like, well, what they got. And this is like just the right like little bite, kind of, to keep you going. But it's not a whole meal. I like it. I think no, it's good. I, I like it too. The next destination on our little food tour would probably be this place, Manolia Pastanesi, because they are the top-rated purveyor of another local specialty, Dondurma, which is sometimes also known as stretchy ice cream. Dondurma is made with a couple of ingredients, milk, heavy cream, sugar, rose water, vanilla extract, and mastic. Mastic is a tree resin that helps make the ice cream sticky, and the other special ingredient that we would be using is salep. So salep is a powder made from the roots of the early purple orchid, and it acts like a thickening agent. When you put mastic and salep together, you get an ice cream that is super, super stretchy, and so tough and thick that uh, some restaurants actually serve it on a spit and slice it with a knife like donor kebab. So salep is really a key ingredient for producing uh, Turkish ice cream. But it's made from orchids, and orchids are an endangered species, and they're banned from international trade. So we will not be using salep in our recipe today, unfortunately. We're gonna use just plain old cornstarch, which is a good substitute for salep, but um, it will not, it means that our ice cream will not be anywhere near as stretchy as this ice cream. And then there's one more twist. We are going to be doing this solely with a bowl and a fork. Very hands-on, and I think it's gonna be fun. So we'll see. Uh, I've never made ice cream before. We did have a Snoopy slushy machine when I was a child. You put ice cubes in and get a snow cone out. This is fun. Yum, yum, fun is what it's all about. Pretty darn excited for this one. So let's get going. So the first step is um, crushing the mastic. All right, let's try it. That's good. Well, I mean, I don't know how good that is. It tastes kind of like plastic. It's chewy, it's super sticky. It's kind of like old timey chewing gum. Interesting flavor, but apparently this will make our ice cream stretchy. So we'll see. Okay, so we're gonna combine some of our ingredients here. We're gonna put our mastic, a half a teaspoon of cornstarch, half a teaspoon of vanilla, the rose water, half a cup of sugar. So we've got two cups of milk warming on the stove. Our milk has started to warm, so now we're going to take our bowl of ingredients, the vanilla, the sugar, all that, and we're gonna mix it slowly into the milk, stirring constantly, and then we're gonna turn our heat to low. And now we are going to stir on low for 30 minutes. We're gonna take it off the heat and uh, let it cool. And then once it's cooled, we're sticking it in the freezer. That's all there is to it. So far, so good. It's been 30 minutes. All right, we're gonna vigorously whisk for three minutes. It's not frozen at all. So far, not feeling very optimistic. If this works, it's gonna be really good. All right, 30 more minutes. Oh, it's starting to freeze. It's starting vigorously for three minutes. It's gonna work. 30 more minutes. What's happening? It's been another half hour. It's an arm workout, that's for sure. See you in 30 minutes. 9.45 at night. Yeah, we're doing. 
not really nice. 30 more minutes. Frozen. I'm back. Oh, it's looking real good now. It's like barely moving. All right, it's 11:45 at night. Honestly, I've lost count. It's looking pretty solid. Okay. So we are supposed to let it sit for five hours, but it's almost midnight. So we're gonna let it sit for overnight. Okay, it's lunchtime the next day. So it is, uh, it's ice cream time. Sammy, you want some ice cream? Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, the texture of the ice cream. This is good. Yeah. I like it. It was kind of a pain to make, but it was also kind of fun because it's really, most of the time it's just sitting and you come back to it every half hour. Kind of fun to make your own ice cream. Think about all the different things we could do with this. You, we can make the ice cream of your dreams. This was super easy and basic to make. It just took 12 hours. Yeah, it took time. <laughs> I've never had rose ice cream before either. It's really good. It's very good. I think this might be the best thing we've had so far on our journey. We have plenty of good stuff. Sure. But this is a... It's a nice treat. Mm -hmm. a really nice treat. Yeah. Alright, I got one more sliver of it. Just leave your ice cream here though. The one thing I will say to people who are thinking of doing this recipe is this. The resin is super sticky. And I still haven't gotten off of the gotten it off of the pot. Yeah, the pot is dead. I think the pot might be dead. So if you are going to be using mastic to make this, I would highly recommend using a pot you're not fond of. Thank you, people of Turkey. Two thumbs up for Turkish ice cream. Kind of fun to make your own ice cream. Essentially, the Anatolian Peninsula, the Anatolian Plateau, um, from, I wish I had a map to look at right now, but essentially what I believe are called the Armenian Highlands um, and the Caucasus. So, we went to the closest mountains we could find, which is Lake Tahoe. Um, oh, look, snow. Snow. Look, snow. <laughs> The El Royale is a bi-state establishment. You have the option to stay in either the great state of California or the great state of Nevada. Well, it's a cottage. We're actually just across the state line in Nevada right now. This road is the state line of Nevada and California. So are we in Nevada right now? We're in Nevada right now. Okay, well, so what's the difference, I mean? Between California and Nevada? Uh, yeah. Well, for starters, rooms in California cost a dollar more. So here we are. It's, uh, it's okay. It's not exactly rustic. It's kind of rustic. It has rustic vibes, um, but it does not look anywhere near as cute as those cottages in Turkey. I don't know. It's a little closer to town than I would have hoped. There's very little country charm to this. I do not feel like I'm living in the forest. We're basically directly behind a casino. So here's the thing about Lake Tahoe. Every time I come to Lake Tahoe, I never know what to do with myself. The lake, of course, is absolutely beautiful. It is very pretty. It's pristine and it's crystal clear. But the reason it's so clear is that it's freezing cold, like way too cold to go swimming in. You can rent a boat, but that costs like $200 an hour. 
And then the other thing to do is go skiing, which is fun, but it's also like crazy expensive. A lift ticket costs like $100, and then the gear rental is like another 80. So if you don't wanna spend $200 on a boat ride, and you don't wanna spend $200 on a lift ticket, there's not much left to do. Hey, wasn't it around here that the Donner Party got snowbound? You know, it's not bad, we can't complain. I mean, we have wood paneling on the walls, which they had in Turkey, so I'm gonna say, Sammy, I'm gonna say, say it. Forest Cottage check? Yeah. A forest style cottage? Forest style cottage? Check? Time for a warm beverage? Yeah. Let's do it. Do you remember Salip? It's the orchid powder we were using to make our uh, ice cream. So along with ice cream, Salip is a key ingredient in a warm milky drink that's really popular in Turkey. It's just called Salip. It's like a winter staple over there. You'll find Salip vendors walking the streets of Turkish cities with samovars full of steaming Salip. But it's almost impossible to find in the US. So the early purple orchid, and apparently most orchids, are listed in the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. So they're an endangered species and it is illegal to export them. So today, we will not be having salop, but we will be having salop beverage powder, a Nestle product, which contains no actual salop and which also apparently tastes nothing like the real thing. Oh, it smells like it smells like vanilla pudding. I will be honest with the camera and say that I burnt the milk. So most of what I taste is burnt milk. Yeah, but I mean the milk doesn't taste. I'm not sure if it's supposed to have a smoky taste, is what I'm saying. It also tastes kind of like a marshmallow. Kind of like Swiss Miss hot chocolate, honestly. Like a white chocolate hot chocolate. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to try it without burning the milk and compare. Yeah. There is something that's. I mean, it's. Your brain can process. It's like, yeah. what is it? Yeah. You know, it tastes like something you might have like in like, I don't know, a spaceship. Yes. <laughs> Astronaut like, ice cream if it was heated up. So what's the, the little black, I mean, brown stuff? Is that the burnt milk or I've, is it part of the powder? I think it's the burnt milk. Oh yeah, so I really did burn. Yeah, I've never made milk on a camping stove before. It's the burnt milk, right? <laughs> I think so. can say big head check so this is pretty cool it's called inside the mind of da vinci it's a burning man statue from a couple of years ago it's fun it's da vinci's head and the back of it you can go inside so like technically right now i am inside the mind of da vinci what a concept i know anyway all good it's a big head we did it we did it we're at mount nemra in carson city nevada two thumbs up Thank you for joining me on my weird and wacky road trip. I think this is a trip only one person in the world wants to take, and that person's me. But we're doing it. Hey there, it's me again. I would like to extend a sincere thank you to the band Turku. All of the music that you're hearing in today's video comes from their album, Nomads of the Silk Road. I'm gonna leave a link uh, to their site below. I would recommend that you go and check them out. They have great music. If you enjoy the 38th Parallel and the Silk Road and learning more about other cultures like I do, I think you'd really like their music. So go and check them out.